I can say personally, like, it's tough mentally sometimes, like, if I have a bad game, like, because I've set st- such high standards for myself because I don't want to be like an average player, I want to be one of the best. I remember when I was eight, it was halfway through the under nine season, yes. basically. Um, my dad got a call and said, oh, we'd like to take Hadji on trial. I don't really care about me, like, do you know what I mean? I, I can sort myself out, yeah. but I just want to be able to, like, just turn around to my mum and just be like, oh, like, I made it, like, what, what do you want? You can have it. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the South May Podcast. I'm Fidel Sivu. And I'll go by the name of Sam Enlow. And thank you for joining us on episode three. And today we've got an exciting guest um, coming to the Self Made Podcast number 37, uh, Haj uh, Minoga. <laughs> deserves a round of applause. Come on, give that to him. Yeah. Did I pronounce your name right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I swear, every time right. I play football, they, ne- they always butcher my name. Yeah, yeah same as my name, though. Even at Fratton Park, yeah. I don't think anyone's ever said my name right. Oh, for real? Exactly. So, from coming through the academy Bro. into the first team. Yeah. They still get it wrong. They still get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and then even the way fixtures is even worse. Then butcher it. Butcher it. <sighs> Bro, don't worry, I've felt that still. But first things first, Hatch, how are you, man? How you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Obviously, the weather's nice, so I'm nice, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> that's good, man. That's good. <laughs> He's even been modelling for Portsmouth, no? <laughs> I've seen yeah. you on the cover. It's been good, actually, to be fair. We'd love to see it, man. No, that's nice. But um, yeah, now to kick things off, it'd be nice, obviously. I, I know you very well, but um, for the viewers out there mm. and cameraman Shubes to tell us about your, your journey. What's, what's, who is Hadj Minogo? Um, so I started playing football when I was like um, really young, actually. I think it was around three I've got a photo playing football. Wow. But um, I used to watch my dad play football all the time, innit? So, and I had my three older brothers that would be playing football as well. And even my sister would be playing football as well, to be fair. Oh, nice. So like... Um, we we'll just go family. over to the park and just have a little kick around. So that was always good. And then, like, I literally just loved football when I was younger. But um, I don't really remember much when I was younger. But there's one story that I remember. It was um, it was over at Priory. Uh, it was just like a little kid to go to the match and stuff like that. And I wanted to go and goal. Oh, I wanted okay. to be a goalie. And I had to take turns for someone. So I was putting the gloves on. Mm. And then the game was still going on because they didn't want to stop it. And then someone scored. And then I started crying and never wanted to be a goalie again. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, so if it turned out well, you could have actually been a goalie. Yeah, I could have been a goalie. You know? To be fair, I'm not even that bad in goal. Oh, so- if I had a bit of training, I could have been decent, to be fair. But that got locked off ages ago. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, I used to play for Mill Mitten when I was younger as well. That was yeah. my grassroots team. Um I can't even remember how young that was, but I think that did start quite early, um, which was, yeah, just, was literally just kick around with mates, yeah. really. That's what football starts off as, just everyone running after the ball, everyone tripping over yeah, the ball. Yeah, just clustering like in one end. Everyone like, following no, it, yeah. But you enjoy it, innit? And then um, I got invited to go along to um, the Portsmouth Deve- Development Centre, which was like just once twice a week training. Oh, it used okay. to be over Admiral actually. I, I do remember that for some reason. Because um, I remember my dad taking me there and then we would be waiting and we'd just have a kick about in the hall basically. But that was kind of the first time I was in the limelight of Portsmouth, which um, was I think around six, seven maybe. So, um, but then I didn't get taken on after that because they said that I didn't take football that serious. But, I feel like it's expected at that at sort that of age. kind of age, wow. isn't it? They yeah. say my attitude weren't good. I feel like I used to mess around a lot. Yeah. I used to be that kid that used to mess around a yeah. lot. So, I mean, I kind of get it, but it's too young. To yeah, no, man. That's, what I, that's one thing I don't get when people say attitude at a seven-year-old. Yeah. Because I've heard a lot of dads say, like, my kid never got into Chelsea or something because of his attitude. Yeah. How yeah. can you tell kids' attitude at that age? It no, doesn't yeah. make any sense. They're just being kids. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah, that's a bit mad. And but, I feel like, yeah, when you're younger... It's just all about enjoying it, isn't it? Like, 100, I agree with so that. So, if my attitude was bad, I was probably just enjoying myself, isn't yeah. it? Because like, you've got to think, if you take it too seriously at that age, you might fall out of love mm. with it, do you know what I mean? By the time, 
what yeah. you turn like 16 to 18 yeah yeah it's what happens isn't it like it is. you see parents many like forcing stop, yeah forcing their kids to you know be serious all the mm. time and by the time they're 16 they get a bit of freedom bro mm. or 18 sorry yeah. get, they find out about clubbing girls, <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean they get burnt out they're, bro, they're, they're burn out. that's yeah. what that's what happens isn't it so no, i think just, it's got to be like gradual isn't it so yeah, yeah. it's just yeah about i feel like you've always got to enjoy it like it should never really feel like a job which yeah. i'm lucky enough to kind of have like it goes through the motion sometimes when i'm enjoying football and not enjoying football but that's just part of it, isn't it? Every, everything has its ups and downs. Like anyone that has a has a job that they're trying to get higher and it has its ups and downs. Like yeah. sometimes you don't get what you want, sometimes you do get what you want, sometimes you do well at something, sometimes you don't. But it's just about keep going because you've got that end goal. No, hundred percent. That's that's what you're aiming for. Like you shouldn't really let anything stop you from getting that. Which I feel like not enough people have that attitude. Really, like yeah, which. To, I can say personally, like, it's tough mentally sometimes, like, if I have a bad game, like, because I've set st- such high standards for myself because I don't want to be, like, an average player. I want to be one of the best. So yeah. I can be quite hard on myself, but I mean... Uh, have you always been like that, though, since a young age? or um, It was kind of my dad, to be fair. Yeah. My dad would be hard on me, like, obviously he had the football background, so he knew the game, and my mum would always just be like... Oh, I knew. She was like, "Oh, did you enjoy it?" And I'd be yeah. like, "Yeah." But she was like, "Oh, I saw you smiling, so you must have you liked must, it." Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Um, but now, like, even now, like whenever my mum comes to watch, I'll like look over to her, and smile on it, because otherwise she thinks I'm having a bad game. Yeah. <laughs> but it's good to have that balance, yeah. right? Mm. Well, obviously, like your dad seems like obviously quite serious, but in a good way. But yeah. Like, where your mum is like. But she... that progressed quite nicely because when I was younger, it used to be like he was hard on me. To be fair, but. <clears throat> I appreciate it a lot now yeah. because looking back yeah because yeah. i don't settle for yeah for average i want i want to be the best in it so oh, and he's kind of yeah. set me up for that yeah which is good and then obviously on the other hand my mom's like yeah i'll <laughs> see her after the game she'll <laughs> give me a hug regardless yeah. like whether yeah. i had a good or bad game so no that's good it's always been that's that's the nice part that's why i like playing football as well because i like my family to be able to come watch yeah to come Bring see your it family well. together right yeah but, um going back to the point so you obviously talked about how you play for so you played at Portsmouth for actually like a long time now. It's, it's, it's a longer time, but I signed so after the development center, I went on trial at Southampton, but then I didn't end up getting into there. Oh, wow, which was but yeah, I was still quite young in it, so I didn't really understand. So I don't think oh, I was okay. that upset yeah. because it was like the traveling, like my dad would finish work have to drive me there with, oh, and getting way. home late like yeah which at that age is not really it but then i remember when i was eight it was halfway through the under nine season yeah. basically um my dad got a call and was like oh we'd like to take Hadji on trial and then i remember and this is at portsmouth yeah no, portsmouth, okay. yeah. yeah and then um i had a game against eastley quite i think i had like one training session but I remember the training session actually because we used to train over at Petersfield, and obviously I knew all the lads before in it. But obviously they got taken on and I did them, and then they was all like so happy to see me, like because they was the people that I used to play against and then started playing with. So like um now I've known them for ages. Like some like some of the lads yeah. I've been up pumping with them since like now, but um obviously some of them got released this year, which was a bit hard on me. But I mean yeah then. Tough one to take. It was supposed to be a six week trial, but I think it only ended up being like a week and a half because we played against Eastley, had like a full week's training. Yeah. Then we had a game against Southampton. And then I think we ended up winning like 5 2 or something like that. And, uh, and I think I scored a couple goals as well. <laughs> Revenge. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Revenge. Vengeance. I'm pretty sure I scored. I scored one like with my nose though, and I had a <laughs> nose. <laughs> yeah, like, the voice coming like, bounced off my nose. And I had a nose with you. Mad. Yeah. But still celebrating. Yeah. <laughs> after after that game, um, mm. they signed me straight away. Oh, nice! And crazy. That feeling must have been. Or did, did you feel it at that age? Sign that age, or was it just like? It's just another. Yeah, another thing to you. Because I think it was like yeah, I'm just gonna be playing football with with my mates, isn't it? Like, <clears throat> but. Because obviously I used to play against them and then we used to go training, like we used to enjoy that. So 
that's all it kind of was. It was just having a kick about with your mates. Like, no, that's it wasn't nice. serious like that. Obviously, training would you do a bit of, but at that age, everyone has a ball, yeah. so you do like a lot of stuff on the ball. Like it's quite nice. Not, it's not quite, fitness, not like that. Not really, no. <laughs> yeah. I feel like at that age you could just run around for as long as you want. Anyways, like yeah, yeah you get tired. tired, isn't it? Yeah. tired. <laughs> would you say I just a quick one? Sound, sorry. Yeah, would no. you say like you enjoy football a lot when you're younger? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. obviously you're with your friends a lot more when you're younger and stuff. Mm. But when you're older, obviously you're in a professional setup now. So everything has got to be done properly by the book. Serious. But I feel like maybe you might have enjoyed it a lot more when you were younger. Yeah, I think, yeah, I do think that because yeah. when you're there, obviously like I've always said, I want to be a footballer, I want to be a footballer. And then kind of just playing for Portsmouth to me was just a, kind of a process of that. Like, but to me in my head, I was just thinking like, or I'm finishing school, like playing around with my mates and then I get to go training and kick a, kick a ball around with my mates. That's it. Yeah. Like I didn't go to school with any of them. So that was the time that I saw them. Yeah. I think we was training like three, three times a week, maybe that young, uh, like just after school. So then, yeah, like it was, it was always nice just go and see them. Like. No, that's nice. And, and then f- fast forward that, you obviously make your debut at 16. Yeah. That's, Crazy. I think uh, levels. Yeah, like second youngest. <laughs> second youngest. Yeah, yeah. Like that. That's two levels. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. Because I even remember it myself. I remember it was a big yeah. thing. Like, it was a huge film. I was like, wow. Mm, yeah. No. That's, that's incredible. Like, talk, talk us through that. How, how did that feel? Proud. It was kind of like, yeah, like a surreal moment. Like, obviously, being from Portsmouth as well, I think. It's a, it's a big it was a big step for me like because i hadn't expect i didn't expect it to be fair like i trained with the first team a couple of times yeah. like 23 games played them and it, it was funny because i used to be one of like i used to, I, I would say i used to be a below average player and then what like when i was younger <laughs> what in the setup that is yeah yeah there was the players were look like really good like and i mean i'm i'm quite physical so i feel like that's that's helped me a bit but mm. I f- it can only get you so far in it yeah so yeah. but um that's 16 it was were, surreal, you, were yeah. you still I doing was, your were you at school here at this point or now you're finished I from and left everything? school signed just signed my scholar yeah and then i think it was like a couple of weeks after maybe oh, no that's, yeah. that's which is why i didn't expect it. I, was, I was a f- i hadn't even really <laughs> started my scholar yet which was like full time yeah where we'd be training <clears throat> every day so it was it was unexpected but i mean it it was surreal because then it built on to me playing a couple more games as well yeah but i mean like that experience for me it was amazing like because pompey fans are there yeah they're, they're nice. special they're, they're different special, aren't they? yeah. yeah man so passionate and pompey, you obviously right? felt that before covid as well the mm, fans yeah. and everything but no, no that's, that, that's amazing and obviously you've gone on to represent uh england mm. and tanzania as well so yeah. that's that's incredible still at the age of uh, age of 19 so a lot of highs i'd yeah. say and you're still 19 i can't i can't 19, believe it like, yeah. <laughs> yeah i wouldn't think it but. so sam's obviously talked about the highs off just wanted to ask you, like, what's like the lows that you've gone through in football? I think, well, my first kind of experience with it was, I think I was under 13, because with Portsmouth, when you're kind of in the academy, you sign every two years, four two years. So, okay. like, if you're under 10s, you're tying a two-year deal to your under 12. Oh, okay, I got you. And then if you're... So then, it must have been when I was, yeah, under 13s because coming up to the time, I was supposed to be signing. Signing, and, yeah. Um, and they just turned around to me. So how they used to do it before was we would have PDRs, which is like progress development reviews, every six weeks. Oh, okay. So... At that young age? Yeah. So oh, they'll okay. kind of tell you like how it's going, like what they think is good, <laughs> what they think is bad. But they'll kind of rank you with cards. Yeah. And then it had like, a, it would be like D9 was um, 
it was red basically they had red amber green d9 mm. was red but like c1 was amber in it yeah but it, if you're in the red then you're going to get released basically yeah wow. so um yeah it was so i remember i went into the meeting and obviously i saw the red the piece of paper on the table and then i just kind of went quiet and timid didn't it because yeah. and you knew that yeah. beforehand yeah. of course yeah, yeah. Oh, which wow. um and then literally after the meeting i was just outside literally just bawling my eyes oh, out bro, yeah it's a tough crying. thing to go to um go through isn't it mm. Mm. but yeah it was that was tough for me but then they said to me like um you need to work on this you need to do this and then um i started working harder and training like me and my dad would go do some other stuff Actually. like over the park like literally summertime park yeah, over the, cage, cage, yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> over the cage Come on. Dad just go there. <laughs> yeah. and um then it kind of then the next review went in there and then i was up there which was oh okay so that was in some way a turning point yeah would you say oh which well it's it's tough but it's them tough times that will push you on to do better in it yeah. because <clears> obviously <throat> i enjoyed playing football i enjoyed playing for portsmouth as well so i yeah. mean that going in there seeing that and then well yeah it really upset me because it would stop me from being able to go playing football with with my mates you yeah. know what i mean so <clears throat> that was tough that was really tough to be fair but i mean it helped me get through it and it's a lesson that i keep close to me mm-hmm. now because if someone turns around to me and says like, oh, i don't think you're good enough then it's just Spurs you one yeah, yeah, to do them wrong and it says yeah. a lot about your character as well because not everyone's like that yeah I, mean? I could have easily just like just given up like for oh they don't think I'm good enough exactly like, yeah but that's why like it, it was good I had the support behind me from my family which yeah I'm fortunate to have that because yeah, yeah I feel like if, maybe if you don't have that it's, it's a bit harder like because a 13 year old kid won't really go to the park and be like oh i need to get better at this that's what i'm trying to yeah. say like psychologically it's just mm. where do you go from yeah. That yeah. Thing? yeah i don't think at that age you'll really think like oh yeah like they've said that i'm not good enough let me go work on what i'm not good at so i mean that that again i had my dad yeah. there pushing me on and my mom was there to help me emotionally you know? yeah so which oh, which two like the support behind me there's always been massive, like my parents and my family. That's always been massive for me, especially with my football. So, yeah. like, I can only thank them for mm. kind of where I am now. And then hopefully it pushes me on to the future because, yeah, yeah, then it'll kind of because nice. what I want to do is to kind of repay them, isn't it? Do you know what yeah. I mean? Because, like, driving me everywhere, and it's not even just the driving, it's the supporting me emotionally and pushing me on and yeah. going to the park with me, helping me, stuff like that. And Is that your motivation, would mm, you say? Yeah, 100%. That's, yeah. Because yeah. I, I don't really care about me, like, do you know what I mean? I, I can sort myself out, yeah. but I just want to be able to, like, just turn around to my mum and just be like, oh, like, I made it, like. Yeah. yeah. What what you want, you can have it. Do you know what I mean? Is. No, that's no, that is very very powerful. Yeah. Honestly, I hear that's that. Real. And um, you talked you touched upon a, a strong point briefly. You said <laughs> that if people were to talk 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 bad things about you and so so mm. forth, do you ever get trolls and stuff? Do people DM you? Because I, I have a few friends that obviously are professional footballers, and people always DMing some weird things, and you're thinking, what is that with people? Yeah, that <laughs> that was it's one weird. guy that was persistent where it got to the point where it's just thinking like like what what are you doing that like, surely he's got something better going in his life to just be persistently yeah, messaging yeah. me i kind of see the ones where people are saying about if if i play in a match or something like that or but um to be fair manager says like um don't don't listen to criticism from someone you wouldn't take advice from oh wow that's so true. i mean and I feel like, yeah, sometimes you just have to do that. Like, I'm I'm the footballer in the situation. Like, they they don't understand what being yeah. in the situation is like. So, mm-hmm. I mean, they can't really have... They can have an opinion, and that's, that's fair enough. Like, yeah. But I feel like some... It's, it's, especially that I'm only, like, 19. That's, that's the thing. Because 
it's that's like, what I don't understand because it it'll be like grown men. Right, right? Yeah, I was about to say that. It'll, most of the time, it's grown men that most of the time they have fake accounts, but those yeah. that are strong enough to actually have their own accounts, it's like, what are you doing? Yeah, you're, sh- you're <laughs> saying this to a 19 year old. Exactly, and it it breaks right. it breaks some people, but and I mean, I wouldn't want to be that guy that someone with potential, and then uh, what I'm saying to them breaks them. That's you know what I'm yeah. trying to say, like. For me, I just feel like do they not think about what they're saying? Yeah. I'm not, I understand fans can be passionate and stuff, but you've got to think long term about mm-hmm. how it affects the player, especially the ones with kids as well. Yeah, like. Bro, like it's just because like, if that yeah, was happening to their kids, kid, they, they wouldn't, they, they wouldn't, wouldn't like it, bro. Exactly, and because they treat footballers like, like just products. Yeah, like yeah. they do as if they have no emotions. Yeah, yeah, bro. Of or I was hoping to touch upon this later on, but like to say things and you don't think like they're human at the end of the day yeah. but um anyway back to sort of mo- modern days so i was reading something that you've um the um, gaffer put you in center mid oh, yeah. and obviously what is your actual preferred position where where have you played because you've got um orca structure you're tall but you also look very quick and nippy as well it's weird yeah. he's broad <laughs> he's, he's a unit oh, no. <laughs> uh, so i did start my well, when I was younger, I used to be a right midfielder. Like that's why I played for Mill Milton. Then I kind of came to Portsmouth. So I didn't really have much position, but then I kind of transitioned into centre mid. Then transitioned into centre back. Okay. Um, then was just playing centre back, and then it was only kind of the youth team. There was only kind of the twenty threes first team that I played right back. Yeah. So then I'd play a game in the first team at right back, and then go back into the youth team at centre back. So I was like. They were saying to me, "Oh, you need to get, you need to get kind of better at this." And I'm like, "I'm not, I'm not playing youth, youth team games in the in position." That position. Oh so, yeah, that's confusing. Though. So that's what I mean. Like, I would go into that, which too far I wouldn't do bad, but it would be kind of contradictory things. Like, I feel like for right back and centre back, you you need similar things but different. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So then that kind of changed. I started playing right back more, but um. Obviously now the eight role is something that the manager's looking at, but um, he said he feels like maybe I'm limited um, okay. at right back because um, in terms of your attributes, yeah, like my athleticism, yeah. and we're a high pressing team. Oh, so okay. I mean, when I'm in right back, all I can really do is press, say the full back, or if they have a wing back sometimes or it's just the winger but when um the way that we play now when I, if i play eight then i can look at pressing the center back when he gets the ball or even pressing the full back like oh, okay so and he likes that about me because i can release myself getting people's faces quick and then yeah in our league they end up just kicking it long and then yeah. or putting it out and then yeah. we we get the ball which is what kind of we want and yeah. it's it's good to be fair like when I've played in there, I have enjoyed it. Mm. It's it's a bit of um, it is fun. It is fun. Yeah. I enjoy it because I I'm like kind of like um, I play as an eight, but I'm the eight that will make the corner runs. Okay. So then the winger can come inside, or if the winger wants to stay on the outside, then I can come be on the inside, isn't it? Yeah. But I mean, that one there, obviously getting the ball out in in the corner is what I would do at right back anyway. So I mean. So he's still, still, still fairly comfortable. comfortable. Yeah. I thought the tackling aspect of it would would, would, would suit yeah. you. Enjoy it you're, yeah. you're which is which That's is what it is as well. Mm. Like. But yeah, I think it does optimize my athleticism a bit more because I mean I I'm just can be everywhere. So, I mean I like, al- yeah. always moving kind of. When you're right back, you can be a bit isolated at times if the ball's on the other side of the pitch. You yeah. Can't don't really affect it. Like you kind of just shuffle around and get narrow. Do you? Job in there, but more involved. Mm. Like but well, no, that's good. It's good that you're versatile. You can obviously be moved around. Definitely. Yeah. Just quickly wanted to touch upon um, this subject. Um, obviously, since signing for Portsmouth, like getting your pro in that, would you say um, anyone's like treated you like differently? I feel like. I feel like yeah, to a certain aspect, like maybe some people are nicer to me. Is it? Yeah, like to be fair, I I try to stay as humble as possible. Like I don't I don't want to be that guy like oh yeah I play for Portsmouth Farm professional footballer because mm. it's it's mm. just a job in it at the yeah. end of the day. Like 
it's like someone come up, up to me and being like, oh, I'm a scaffolder or, yeah. or I work with computers. So I mean, it's, it's not, because someone could be like really high up in their job, higher than me. Like, yeah. You have know that. And I mean, we all came from the same place as well. So yeah. that's what I mean. Like, I feel like people are proud of me for what I've achieved. Some people might be a bit jealous or a bit envious, but they never really show it to me. They haven't. They never yeah. really show it. Really? Like say to to my face, they maybe like, might slag me off behind my back, but yeah, that's, but that happens, isn't it? Yeah. Like yeah. to be fair, like what I, if they're saying that, then that's fair enough. They can just do what they want. Crack but, on. Yeah, because yeah. it don't really affect me. Yeah. But I mean, all I want to be is just a success story from from Portsmouth, innit? Yeah. And to inspire people. To be able to say that, like, oh, he's from Portsmouth and he's gone on to do this. Like, wh mm. why can't I do that? Yeah. And I feel yeah, like that's, that's what that's what people need to just say. Like, um, like me, be best defender in the world. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Well, of yeah, course. That's good. Yeah, that's the mindset yeah. you gotta have as an athlete. I think. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's mm. that's the target you got put in your own head. Do you know what I mean? Why not? Yeah. Hundred percent. And for yeah, your age to be thinking about that is, is strong. Yeah. Have you even done talks at your old school? I think. Yeah. I met, I, I've seen. And for you to, to have that understanding of that um, is strong. But um, yeah. Shoes, what, what were you saying, sir? Um, yeah, no. Um, another thing that I want to touch on is a very touchy subject, obviously, with everything going on. <coughs> but well, just the whole um, racism, obviously, the elephant in the room, your kind of your skin. Mm. There's a lot of stuff that's been happening around black players with the Euros, um, obviously Sancho, Rashford and Saka missing that. But obviously a lot of racism out of that. Yeah. And um, prior to that, kneeling, um, Black Lives Matter and so forth. So I just want to take your, your take. You as a young black footballer, what is racism like? What's your view on it? I just think in football, especially, like there's no, there's no space for it. Like I don't understand... I don't really understand racism anyways. Like, I feel like just looking at someone, looking at the colour of their skin and thinking that, like, oh, I don't, I don't like you, it's, it's a bit weird. Yeah. It, it baffles me. <clears throat> and like, I feel like, especially the Euro situation, like the bravery and the courage that it takes for them players to step up on the stage that they are. Yeah. Like, most people that can sit there and abuse them, like, they're sat there at home watching, yeah. watching them on the, watching no, them well, anyways. Yeah. And like, true. I just think, I, I, I get like some people get frustrated and like, I understand like just normal abuse because people get that, people get angry, people get heated. But I mean, yeah. racism is just always a, a step. I just think it's, they're taking it too far. Yeah. You know what I mean? And obviously yeah. we talked about uh, the Sancho, Saka and Rashford situation. I just feel like obviously, unfortunately missed, but obviously if they score, they're labeled as heroes, but yeah. they miss all of a it's sudden. The outcome. You know, they're this, they're that, yeah. they're this and that. You know, I think it's crazy, bro. And I feel like for a lot of, <clears throat> say, black footballers that say like me, I can represent England or I can represent Tanzania, I feel like I'm more swayed towards Tanzania. Now 100%. Because I can't see, like I'm 19 now, Realistically, if I'm going to be playing in uh, in about five years, six years, like I can't see it changing. Yeah. I can't see nothing changing yeah. because even when I was kind of younger, you you see about players racially abused. Sterling's had mm. it a lot over the years, and that's what I mean. Like, so for me, I kind of look at that and think, like, do I really want to play in that setup? Yeah, for a country like I make one mistake and then. I, I, I can't even check my phone. No, nah, mm. yeah. And yeah, that's terrible. And the bro. fact that they had to come out and apologize like the way they did, like Saka took how many days yeah, away? Yeah, Which... good time. And everyone was waiting for that yeah. message. Yeah. Imagine how he was feeling. Be like that. Yeah. Imagine how he was feeling. Do you know what I mean? Like, obviously, they got to the final. No one even, well, I didn't think they'll get to the final, really. Yeah. But obviously, they, they have. And, bro, all of a sudden, They've been yeah. burdened with all it, this. Do you know what realistically, I mean? Realistically, it should be a celebration getting yeah. to the final. That's even what I mean. losing, it should be, yeah. oh, we got to the final, yeah. let's celebrate. But instead, for something that's supposed tarnished. to bring the whole country together. Yeah. Like, yeah. And there's, there's diversity here. That's just what 
England's like. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's there's a decent amount of diversity here, and they they've put on the England shirt, they've played with pride, they've done everything that they possibly can, and yeah. that's why I don't get it because the fact that it's supposed to bring everyone together, like when England are playing, when they're winning, everyone's happy, like everyone's mates. It don't matter the colour of your skin, nothing. And then the moment that we lose, yeah, it's just pointing the fingers at yeah. us. It's but would you say you're surprised by the racism that they received? The first thing I thought once all three of them missed, I was thinking, <laughs> yeah, they're they're gonna, honestly they're going to get racially abused. Because I feel like yeah. I wasn't the only person that thought that. No, because <laughs> when I see when I yeah. see Saka walk up after obviously Sancho missed and um, Rashford missed, I thought. If he misses it, yeah, yeah. Nah, do you know what I mean? And we shouldn't even be thinking like that. That's, that's what, I, I do you was, know what I mean? I was at Wembley at the time. I was like, nah, I need to get out of Bro, here. Bro, this is what she I'm trying to say. You shouldn't, like, and that's in yeah. in that sense alone, that's messed up. Like, we shouldn't have to think like that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, because yeah. Saka's walking up to potentially take the pe- the, the winning penalty. If he scores, yeah. oh, he's a hero. But if he misses, all of a sudden, you're thinking, oh, for oh. goodness sake. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you, bro, you shouldn't, we shouldn't have to think like that, man. It's 2021. Exactly. Bro, it's crazy. Yeah. It's actually crazy. And obviously, I don't want you to talk too much about this because <coughs> you're in a conflict and situation playing at Portsmouth. But obviously, there was racism that happened with a few of the under-18 mm. players, which I'm sure you're aware of. But Fidel, what's what sort of your take on what's happened around that? First things first, I'm going to be real, isn't it? Like, I feel like I don't understand why the club are taking this long to handle the situation. I feel like they've handled it poorly because the evidence is clear to what the players have said, obviously on the, on the Snapchat group chat of the under 18s. And I just think these players are what, 16, 17, 18. And I just feel mm. like they're old enough now to know, yeah. you, you know your rights and wrongs, Sam. Do you know what I mean? Like no. when we were 16 to 18, yeah. we, knew, we knew what to say and what not to say, even yeah. if you're on a group chat or not. So I just feel like there's no other option, but termination of their contract they have to like i feel like ports have got to be firm man if you're serious yeah. about kicking racism out of football you've got to be firm in do you know what i mean really yeah. really kicking it out so but well, obviously they haven't released their final statement but i don't really understand why it's taken so long yeah but i feel like their contracts need to be terminated of course educate them speak to them speak to their families because obviously it's coming from their families like it's from the top down isn't it so yeah. not the bottom up but no, um, I agree. Do, do you feel like you like taking the knee and all these gestures will actually kick racism out, or do you? What well, do you feel like it has an effect? To be fair, like I think it shows awareness, but it always it always comes to it. what I think in my head is <clears throat> like does say like the BLM nil does it stop? Like when does it stop? And if it does stop, are people going to consider it racist or not? I feel like. That's yeah. kind of the controversy to it. Like, if it stops, are people going to say like, oh, like, why is it stopping? That's racist. Yeah. But can they, can we do it before every game for the foreseeable future? Which, it's it's a difficult one, really, isn't it? It's really difficult because I feel like for some people, there's, there's a right answer. For some people, there's... there's yeah, no, you know, you're always sort of a, a lose-lose, right? Yeah. But it feels weird. It's like dealing with kids it's like yeah. taking a toy you have to have a consequence but why can't you i, I can't get it why can't humans just understand it's wrong no, like it's... even a ban on football why does it have to get to that point for you yeah. to understand that oh what i'm doing is wrong you know it's... saying a lifetime ban me pff, like there's uh, there won't ever be anything that will mm. in my idea that will allow people to realize that it's wrong i personally think it's it sad it doesn't do much man it's uh you know taking a knee before games i feel like it's good for publicity, yeah, it's good to raise awareness, everyone's talking about it, but for me, it also, like, obviously, like, I was all for it, like, at first, but you got to think it fuels hatred as well, yeah. you know what I mean? It fuels hatred, and it makes the people that are initially racist in the first place mm-hmm. want to do it even more. Do you that's understand the, what I'm trying to that's say? That's the other thing with it, though, like, yeah. do you not do something because it's going to get hatred or it's yeah. gonna get that or do you kind of stay strong with it because that's kind of what it comes down to like mm-hmm. with that it it draws out the racist i feel like 100 yeah but that's what i mean like before people are booing it stuff like that yeah 
Um, they could say it's, they think it's politics and football, so they could get away with it. But underlying the factor is, yeah, maybe they are racist. But I mean, what I kind of look at is what happens to the people that get confirmed. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. They, they're racist. Yeah. It's like confirmed what happens to them. Like, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, it's it's been happening for ages. It's been happening for ages in football. It shouldn't take... Um, like Sancho, Rashford, and yeah. Saka missing the penalties, yeah. getting racially it's abused. Just, it's been happening. Yeah. Exactly. Like no, I saw true. someone got they didn't get into uni because of their race, yeah. and that's the way it should be. That's that's how it should have been for the whole time. It, yeah. yeah, I don't know why it's only it's only happening only now. now. Yeah, and that's our, that's what I think football like whoever's working higher up they've got to start like sanctioning proper punishments yeah. because that's the only way like. For example, say if someone's been racially abused on a pitch, they've got to say, right, well, we're gonna, we're gonna, what's it? We're gonna, we're gonna ban him for like the whole season or something yeah. like that. Yeah. That's the only way, bro. No, like, it's gonna course, stop. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because or if somebody in your stadium or whatever has been, you know, chanting racial abuse or whatever, then what? We'll play like no, no. behind closed doors yeah. or something like that. Do you know what I mean? That's what they do in other countries. No, they've right? got to do it, man, because they've no, got to be firm. Content. That's the only way you're going to kick it out. I feel like they're, they're just too soft with it. They yeah. pretend it's like to attack. care. It's like a, a slap on the wrist. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Anyway, this is, this is a passionate subject. Obviously, yeah. we could go on for days about this. Bro. No, I could go on for days. More, <laughs> now, I mean, more, more on the, the lighter things. What sort of your goal for the, the season ahead um, in terms of Portsmouth and what's the overall clubs? Well, you've obviously talked about it, but what, what's the goal? For you as an individual and as a club, where where do you guys want to be? Obviously, promotion is what the fans want. It's what the backroom staff want. And what it's what the players want. Do you know what I mean that? Like, ever since we've kind of come down, Portsmouth, we wanted to get back to where where we belong. Yeah. So I mean, I feel like that's what every season's about. Like, get promoted. If we get if we got promoted, I think. In the championship, we wouldn't be thinking like, oh, our goal is to stay up. I think our goal is always to get back to the oh. Premier League as quick as possible. Yeah, and as it should like, be, yeah. As a fan, it's good to hear that. Yeah, <laughs> and the fans can fuel that, the the managers can fuel that, the players can fuel that, and the new players coming in, that's that's what it, it should mean to them as well. Like, you're coming to Portsmouth Football Club, it has a big history, like, the fans are a massive part of the club, like so I think it's kind of time to give give the fans what kind of they deserve in it, like getting promoted and what the club deserves because and I mean the fans have been they've been through it a lot. Yeah. They've been they have been through it a lot. So They're stuck stuck stuck, stuck by, by the club it, as so, well, yeah. Which is it's always good, like that's why I wanna get my opportunity to play because I put the shirt on I play, I give my all every game, 110%. Like, I'll never step on the pitch. As soon as I step over that white line with the kit on, yeah, it's it's, it's goal time for me. Like, and and that's what every fan wants to hear to me. Exactly. No, that's yeah. I, feel right, like, I feel like, well, obviously, I'm from Portsmouth, I'm a Portsmouth player, so I want Portsmouth to succeed more than, more than anything. So, yeah. I mean, it, I feel like maybe it means more to me than other people because I'm a local lad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all I can kind of do is get the other other players kind of at it because I feel like that's kind of my duty now that I am really the only guy from Portsmouth. Nah, yeah, that's strong. That's it's real. a lot of weight on your shoulders, but I genuinely believe you can. So um, now it's time for the, the quick fire. It's time for the quick fire <laughs> questions, man. <laughs> I'll do this ready, out, yeah. so I've got to get my alarm closed Basically, out. you've got 60 seconds to answer as many questions as possible. Dude. Yeah, man, come on. Even <laughs> <clears throat> you. You ready? Can I pass them? <laughs> or can you... Uh, yeah. You'll be calm, you'll be calm. You'll Is be it? all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ah, right, Sam, you ready? Off, I don't want to embarrass yeah. myself, and then that's ah, right. you'll be alright. You'll be alright. Towel shoes, cut. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, go ahead. Right, ready? Yeah. Best player you've ever played against? Oh, played against? I'd say Bobby Duncan, Liverpool. Okay. Your football idol? Um, <laughs> John Terry, as a footballer, not outside of football. Love it. Well, I don't know if I love that actually. <laughs> uh, strong. So. <laughs> Best team you've ever played against? Um, yeah, probably Liverpool. Best moment in football? Um, my debut. Best player at training? <laughs> Me. <Jeez. laughs> if you weren't a himself. footballer, what would you be? A uh, chef. 
Hey, chefing it up, yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not many people know that one. <laughs> what is your go-to initiation song? Um, oh, I've had to sing two and <laughs> they're, they're really different. Yeah. My first one, I sung Riptide by Vance Joy. Oh, nah, that was good. And the second one, I'd done J-House Daily Duppy. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're very different, very different. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll, answer, I'll ask you the last two. Yeah. So who's got the best, dress at, the best dress sense at the club, sorry? It's a tough one, I can't know. <laughs> He's backing himself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know you think about yourself. I'm like, yeah, I'm quite came in looking drippy. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, John Marcus comes in looking nice. Yeah? He does. He dresses nice all the time, to be fair. Nice. And the worst dresses at the club. I had to ask that one. <laughs> He's not there no more, but Rasmus used to dress in some questionable stuff. It's <laughs> <laughs> off the island or whatever. I swear. <laughs> But yeah, nah, nah, that's it, that's it. No, nah, I have to reload. Yeah. What what song was the first one? Mate. Riptide. Have you heard? Riptide? He goes, nah. baby, no, 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 to the Riptide. No, no. Oh, he goes, no, 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 don't know, he don't know. <laughs> FIFA song, FIFA song. <laughs> dun, 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 he goes, dun, dun, I want to be your left hand, man. I love you. Yeah, I know. When you sing it. FIFA song, FIFA song, FIFA song. Yeah, man. Yeah. Nah, that's a tune, though. I like that one. I like that, that one, that one was peak singing that one, to be fair, because it was my first time away wait it's like so the only time you sing is kind of when you first go away oh but you stay away, over yeah. like so you go because obviously i made my debut we only, we didn't stay over in crawley because it's only local in it but yeah. i was the only one there like young one mm-hmm. so i mean i had to get up and sing in front of all the first oh, no. <laughs> you're just like oh, this is long yeah. bro yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think it was, was yeah <laughs> I, I was there, I was there like this. Sipping on water before. Yeah. For real, for real. Nah, for real. nah, you did well though. Nah, you done very well, man. Mm. Oh, that was a good stuff. And I rate that. I think that that's all I had. Um, any last tips? Yeah, for anyone listening anyone at listening, home. Obviously, very inspirational. Get yeah. some good stuff too. Yeah, fair, but yeah. Um, well, the best advice I've ever got is just um, is for my situation as well like there's thousands like millions of people like me trying to get the same thing as me so what's what's gonna differentiate me from them yeah. what can i bring that they can't and that was always powerful to me because it's always just, yeah like work on the things that you're good at yeah i feel like yeah people always kind of saying that. Like, work on the things that you're bad at and they forget like what they're good at innit? Yeah, oh, but I feel yeah. like you can make you should work on both strengths. you should work on your strengths yeah. as well because I mean if you've got a sem- strength make it a super strength like it is, and yeah. I hear that and that's what I mean it's a different like, take to it I never yeah. really thought about you, you, that you don't want to be that guy that's just really good at one thing is it but I mean you could be that guy that's really really good at one thing but yeah. then good at other things you know what I mean yeah. like yeah. and then works on the things that he's not as good at and makes them really good but then he's also making what the super strength strong yeah. oh, okay no i, no, hear, I that. hear that yeah. very strong and that's what i mean i feel like sometimes you gotta embrace what you're good at don't let it define you but embrace it yeah because i mean like that's kind of what's gonna what's got you on the stage ready so why stop work on it now because like say for me like f- physically it, it got me onto the stage like so then why should i stop work on it yeah and always for me it's like can i be the fastest can i be the strongest can i be the most powerful yeah always, always as long as work as long as working on the other side like tactical yeah. or technical yeah and i mean make it a super strength like that's it you go out there and you feel kind of untouchable yeah. i feel like that's the best feeling as well mm-hmm. stepping on the pits and like i'm gonna have a good game here. top three four i'm gonna have a good game and i feel like yeah, that's kind of the mindset you have to have. And it says a lot about your mentality, actually, as a youngster, because you've got to think you're only 19. I don't right, feel yeah. like many youngsters your age have that mentality. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, honestly, you've got to give credit to yourself and pat yourself on the back. Pat yourself on the back. Legit. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, man. Because, honestly, I, I, yeah, I don't think it's, real, I don't think it's me, though. Like, like yeah. I think just growing up, my dad put it into me a lot. Like, to be fair, that quote, like, um, a teacher told me at school, yeah. the one like, um, there's loads of people doing what you're doing, what, what makes what you makes different you from different, them? Yeah, and I mean, that's always stuck with me all the way through school, all the way up to now. So, I mean, I feel like I'm fortunate enough to have had the right people around me 
to be able to tell me that and it's it stuck with me the whole time so yeah. i don't think it comes down to me like i think it's yeah, humble think humble it's <laughs> yeah. no I, I hear that honestly to see great maturity from someone so young it's, it's real good um you've said, said some nice gems there and i appreciate you coming on it'd be mm. nice to obviously have you on Later on down the yeah, season. Make sure you so, come back. Make yeah. sure you <laughs> come back home, man. No, so definitely come come back. Um, look forward to obviously seeing you on the big stage. Keep doing what you're doing. And yeah, thanks for listening, guys. Oh, Hope you don't enjoy. forget. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment, please. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for listening. This is Southmade. Peace.